This is the app without which I would never have started journaling so consistently, without which I would not have this incredible detailed record of my life, and without which I honestly probably would not remember 99% of what happens to me. So I journaled on paper for a long time. You might have seen that in my videos if you're a long time viewer. I have this big heavy box of my old journals in my closet back home. And it was great. It is very nice to be able to flip through all these tangible artifacts and actually feel the pages with your hands. But there are a lot of downsides to paper journaling. As I said, those journals are in a box back home, so I can't access them right now. They're very difficult to transport. And honestly, even when I lived at home, I just never felt motivated enough to actually bring that box down and relive the memories in those journals. So they just sat there. There's also the privacy concerns of paper journaling. I mean, there's also data privacy concerns with digital journaling, but there isn't that like physical risk of someone finding your journal. Journal. I also would worry that I would lose my journal while traveling and then handwriting was just getting to be very tedious I can type much faster than I can handwrite and I just felt like I couldn't keep up with the pace of my thoughts But the biggest advantage I think digital journaling has over paper is the searchability This journal is an extension of my brain now I realized when I was doing my little yearly review around New Year's that I could search the names of people in my life and literally find everything that we did together that year every single memory if I for example randomly remember the name of some movie I watched a while back I can search that and find exactly when I watched it probably I wrote about where I watched it with whom I watched it it's just insane to me I started using this app in September of 2020 and the key to building a journaling habit, any habit, but this video is about journaling, is to start small. This is actually a mantra that has very much been guiding my life lately. Set the bar low to meet it more consistently because achieving something tiny every single day and actually being able to keep up with it consistently is gonna add up to so much more progress over time than setting the bar way too high from the beginning, inevitably failing to meet it when you get tired or busy, and then just giving up on that completely. So I started with the bar very low. The bar was on the floor. I was using the free version of day one, which allows you to add only one photo per entry. So I was like, okay, Every day, I'm just gonna write like two sentences about what I did that day and then attach one photo that I think is representative of that day. So I did that for four months and then I wanted to spice it up a little. I started using some daily prompts and then six months in, I was ready to commit to day one premium. So that is $35 a year, in my opinion, very much worth it. And then I started adding more photos. My entries started getting a little longer and longer just because I was naturally motivated to do so. Like I was not forcing myself to reach any sort of word count or anything like that. So this is my current little setup in day one. In the free version, you can only have one journal, but if you upgrade to premium, you can have multiple. So I have four. I have my daily journal, which is for my daily morning and evening entries. By far the most used journal, um, currently at 839 entries, let's go. I have the reviews journal, which I started using a year ago. I used to do my little weekly and monthly reviews in a paper notebook, but after journaling digitally for a year, I decided that I wanted to move my reviewing and planning processes into day one as well, just to have everything in one place. And I loved it, I never went back, so this has all my weekly reviews, monthly reviews, and monthly budget reviews. Then I have the deep thinking journal, which I don't use very much. It's just where I put any entries that are not part of my regular daily journaling. So like if I'm thinking a lot about something specific and I sit down to write an entry just on that topic, I will put it in there. And then I have a dream journal. I rarely remember my dreams and if I do, I usually don't really care to write them down, but on the rare occasion that I do, 
this journal exists. Which brings us to one of the best features of day one and a huge advantage of digital journaling, custom templates. So day one offers some pre-made templates, but I made my own. Basically to make a template, you just format an entry um, in a way that looks nice to you. Day one has a lot of different options for headings and lists and whatnot. So you make that, you copy it, you go to preferences, templates, new, paste it in, add any tags you want, and you're done. So I have a template for my daily morning entry that fills it with a list of three good decisions I could make that day, three things I'm excited about, and then one way that I could attend to someone that day, basically make someone else's day better. Um, this last one is an idea that I got from a podcast interview with um, Campbell Walker that I highly recommend, so I'll add the link to that episode in the description. Then I have a daily evening template which has three wins from the day and three things that I was grateful for. The much more complicated weekly review template and the perhaps even more complicated monthly review template. So my current journaling routine consists of morning journaling, first of all. So after I've done my cold shower and stretches and all of that, I sit down and I set a timer for five minutes. I need this timer because I honestly just don't feel that motivated to write in the morning. It's very good for me because it forces me to brain dump anything in the back of my mind that I might be worried about for the day or remember something that I need to do that day. But it's just harder to think of things to write about because nothing has happened that day yet. My brain is still functioning very slowly in the morning. So I just need a five minute timer to push me. Then during my evening routine, I'm a lot more motivated to write because I've just had a busy day. A lot has happened. I wanna make sure I document it. So I open up my time tracking app on my phone uh, just to jog my memory of what happened that day. These entries usually end up being around three to 500 words, but I also found a recent one that was 900 words because sometimes you just have a lot to say. I try to mention specific names of people and things. Like if I go to an event, I try to write down the names of all the people who were there. This takes a few extra seconds, but it's the kind of thing that will make these entries a lot more interesting to look back at and a lot more searchable. If at some point in the week I miss a day, it still happens sometimes, I will usually write an update entry that Sunday when I'm doing my weekly planning. Or otherwise, if I really don't feel like updating I will at the very least just add some photos from that day if I have any and then finally every Sunday I use that weekly review template that I showed you so I like to open that up in a new window and bring it to the side of my screen and then in the main screen I can read through that week's daily entries to pull out what went well and what didn't go well that week day one also has a tagging feature I don't use tags a whole lot um, I just have a tag for each type of entry, so morning, evening, weekly review, or budgeting. And then I also tag each entry with the day of the menstrual cycle that I'm on because that affects so much of how I feel mentally, emotionally, physically, and so that just helps me to notice patterns that might be happening. Another huge benefit you get with premium is that instead of just being able to add one photo per entry, you can add up to 30 media items per entry. And I make full use of this feature. I upload lots of photos, video clips. I also add a lot of screenshots of text conversations and things like that. Looking back and seeing all of this really motivates me to take more photos and videos of my daily life because it's not just the special events that I want to remember. I also want to see the time I spilled coffee on my computer or my view sitting in class on a random Tuesday, me at the bus stop with all my groceries. Like years into the future, I think it's going to be so cool to see what my mundane daily life was like. Speaking of looking back, day one has a couple of different views for experiencing all of your journal entries. There's the basic timeline view where you just see everything in order. Um, there's the map view, which I don't use a whole lot, but it's kind of cool to see once in a while. I'll usually set the location of the entry to the location of one of the photos that I attached because otherwise the location would just be home 99% of the time because that's where I write at the end of the day. There is the media view where you see all your photos and videos and I freaking love this for just reminiscing on all your memories. And then finally we have the calendar view. So on this calendar, if the date is in blue, 
it means you wrote an entry that day. And then if you added media to the entry, it'll show up in that little square. And this is super motivating because it makes you wanna try and fill up this calendar and not see any blank boxes. And then when you achieve that, it feels so good to scroll through and like see an entire month filled up with memories. <sighs> I feel like I've been talking so much, but the very last feature that I wanna talk about is on this day. So this is a feature that shows you all of the entries that you've written on this date each previous year. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but I check this every day because I think it's so cool and so eye-opening to look maybe even just two years back and see how different your daily life was back then. I really like it because I think it gives you some really good perspective. Like if you are doing better now today than you were exactly a year ago, then it reminds you of how far you've come, which is really nice. But also conversely, if you're feeling worse now, whether it's just a difficult day or you're going through a rough patch, I think it's a really nice way to remind yourself that everything is temporary. This too shall pass. I know that sounds really cheesy, but I have legitimately used this as a technique to bounce back after um, feeling sad for a little while because I realized I was like, damn, one month ago, I was doing so much better than I am now. Everything was going so well. So I went back to my journal, I found those old entries, and I was reading my own writing, my own voice speaking in such a motivated, hopeful, and joyful tone that reading it actually gave me energy in the present moment. It brought me out of that sad state that I was in. So as you can see, it is getting dark outside. I should probably stop talking at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful, that if you don't journal, hopefully I convinced you to try it. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to continue the conversation and continue talking about it. And I will see you in two weeks with a new video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!